Hello guys, welcome to another coaster list. Today I'm going to be counting down the top eight roller coasters at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, which is a park located in Williamsburg, Virginia. I got the opportunity to revisit this park this summer. I first visited back in 2016, which was three years ago, if you're doing the math. But uh, yeah, I, I'm glad I got to revisit this park. I think this park is absolutely fantastic. I, unpopular opinion, right now, I do think it's better than Busch Gardens Tampa simply because of all the theming. I certainly think that it's a very beautiful park, probably the most beautiful park that I've visited so far. And overall, like going back here again was a great time. So, so without further ado, let's get started. So taking the number eight spot is going to be Grover's Alpine Express, which this is just your standard kids coaster. So naturally I'm going to be putting this coaster in last place. Though it was nice getting the credit, but honestly, if I have one day to go here, like if it were just like, you know, if I, this is where my home park, I'd probably say pass on it because it's just a kiddie coaster. So, I mean, if you really need the credit, then I understand. But taking the number seven spot is going to be Loch Ness Monster, which is an old arrow custom looper, which it was great getting to go back on this thing. It, I know that since 2016, they've changed the trains and they've added some effects, but the effects were turned off when I wrote it, if you've seen a POV. And honestly, I was pretty let down by this ride, like when I wrote it again. Like I remember saying, like, from my experience in 2016, I remember saying it was butter smooth. I feel like it's now starting to show its age. I'm not sure if it's because, I'm not sure if it's rougher because they've ch changed the trains or not. I don't know, but uh, I definitely found some headbanging like on this coaster, which I was pretty disappointed because I was like, ooh, nice. I feel like this Monster is going to be like one of those coasters where it's just going to surprise people. But still, I got some headbanging. Or maybe it's because, you know, I had a different perspective back in 2016. But overall, I still enjoyed Loch Ness Monster, but honestly, I was a little bit let down by it. Though I do think they should never remove it because it is a true classic. Like, when you just see those interlocking loops, like, you know, like, you're going to be in for something special. And it's a very um, iconic roller coaster, too. I do think, I think it's an Ace Coaster Landmark. I'm not sure. Someone comment below if it is an Ace Coaster Landmark. But, uh, yeah. Overall, I think Loch Ness Monster is a pretty awesome ride. Very long. I do like how it's a long ride. And I do think it is better than Anaconda, King's Dominion. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I like this monster. Definitely a good coaster in the park, but still, it just wasn't my favorite. Though it is a true classic. But let's move on to our number six spot, which is going to be Invader, which is the park's GCI wooden roller coaster. It was a great game to go on this roller coaster, but honestly, part of me really liked it, like with its airtime. It had some good airtime. But honestly, part of me was a bit let down by it. I definitely think it probably... I've probably never gotten more stable on a GCI than Invader. Like, Dorrance, like, my first round of the last Helix, my restraint really went down really hard. It was not good. But I definitely think of the GCIs I've done it is the smoothest GCI. I mean, I think of the GCIs I've done, is it the newest? I've done? Yeah, it is the newest I've done. Yeah, and I think, yeah, this is the latest GCI. Yeah, because, um, let's see here. I've done, let's see, Wildcat 96. Guazi 99, Roar 98, yeah, 98, Lightning Racer 2000, Thunderhead 2000, Wildlife 2013, yeah, newest GC I've done. <laughs> Sorry if you were like, you know, kind of, but anyway, um, Invader is overall a great roller coaster. Um, it definitely is a good one for the families, I will say, but honestly, part of me, yes, was a bit let down, but just because it was a little bit tamer compared to some of the GCIs I've done. It was it's not one of my favorite GCIs that I've experienced, but it still is pretty good though. I do find it interesting how it has like a tunnel during its first drop. I heard it's to reduce noise. So I do find it kind of interesting. But uh yeah, Invader is still a great coaster. I definitely think it is a good ride. One day I'll try to review this coaster and I'll give you my thoughts. I think I may actually review that coaster next. So stay tuned. But yeah, Invader, like it's a good ride, but honestly it just wasn't my favorite in the park. It is kind of more of a family coaster, but it's still fun. So taking the number six, sorry, number five, oh, it's the number six. Taking the number five spot is going to be Tempesto, which is the Premier Ride Skyrocket 2 model. This is just, you know, this is just a Skyrocket 2. You, if you've seen my uh, reactions of Tigris, you, you know, like you've seen the Bush Gardens Tampa countdown, you know what I'm talking about here. It's got Skyrocket level airtime at the top. Great zero G roll. You feel like you're going slow motion. And overall, it's a very compact coaster. Again, it's not one of my favorite coasters. I definitely think the comfort collars suck. Sorry, people who are a fan of the comfort collars, or I'm not sure if that's a joke or not. I don't know. But uh, 
yeah, Tempesto. Overall, I do think it's a very, still like, so I do enjoy Skywalker too. I do think people are like over hating on these things. I don't hate these coasters. I do really like them. Like they're compact, they're intense, they're smooth. But uh, Tempesto, like, I don't know, it's just not like my, 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 like my favorite attraction out there. Sorry, Hunter. <laughs> but uh, yeah, overall, I do think it's still a good coaster. I definitely think it's a very, it has a very great plaza. Probably a better plaza than Tigris. But I do, even though I do think Tigris is the prettier coaster and the better ride overall, simply because there's onboard audio in the station with Tigris. Tempesto doesn't really have onboard audio in the station. But, uh, or, or audio, like station, I don't know what I'm saying right now. There's no onboard audio on either coaster. I don't know what I'm saying. But overall, I do think Tempesto is a great coaster. And let's move on to our number four spot next, which is going to be Griffin, which is the park's dive coaster. And I have done one of these dive coasters before. Again, I've done Shigra, which is at one of my home parks, Busch Gardens, Tampa. And I do really like these b and dive coasters. I think they're fantastic rides. I do feel like, like Griffin, like Shigra, I do feel like Griffin is kind of a one-trick pony. I feel like you just ride for the gimmick. That's about it. But I definitely think there is still, like, I feel like the rest of the ride definitely is an added package. Like, you've got the second drop, you got you got two elements. Like, can't complain about that. But then you also have got like, you know, got a splashdown, but honestly, like, you can't really even get really close to the splashdown, so that kind of ruins it, you know? Like, if you're just watching the coaster. But overall, I do think it's a very pretty coaster, and I definitely enjoyed Ryan Griffin again. It was definitely fun. I definitely do think it is smoother than Shigra, even though I do think Shigra is the better ride because Shigra has the tunnel dive. Griffin doesn't really have the tunnel dive. But overall, still enjoyable ride. Fantastic first drop. And that's about it. So let's move on to our number three spot, which is coming in number three is a was a, I was genuinely surprised by this coaster. We're just taking the number three spot. That's gonna be Verbolton. I was very surprised by riding Verbolton again. If you know me, like at kind of I'd say one of my home parks, Universal. I consider all Orlando parks being home parks. So yeah, Universal, which is uh, which is one of my home parks, has the Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure, which I waited three and a half hours to ride that. And yeah, like if you see my blog, you know what I'm talking about. And I feel like Verbolton is very similar in that, although I do think Verbolton's better, in a way. Like, I was genuinely surprised by riding Verbolton again. I remember riding in 2016, and I was like, great ride, but that was rough. I remember saying that. But riding it again, I, it was nowhere near as rough as from what I remembered. I definitely think it was way more intense than I was expecting. I remember, I think I blacked out on my rides, like, like, like Helix, like, that was insane. And then, of course, spoiler alert. It has a free fall drop, like you know what I'm talking about. And then it has, of course, two great launches. I definitely also love how it gives tribute to the Big Bad Wolf roller coaster, which I never rode Big Bad Wolf, but I know a lot of people who are fans of the Big Bad Wolf miss that coaster. So I'm glad Verbolin at least gives some tribute, like towards the end of the ride, how it has the same path as the path that Big Bad Wolf took. So I'm glad it still has tribute to that. And I definitely think it is probably, yeah, probably the best themed roller coaster in Busch Gardens, Williamsburg. And overall, I definitely think it's a fantastic roller coaster, and I was genuinely surprised I ran it again in 2019. So, let's move on to our top two. And let me tell you, before I talk about these top two, like Busch Gardens Tampa, these next two are very close to each other, in my opinion. Like, I still kind of debate which one I prefer, like this or that. But I do have my conclusions set. So, taking the number two spot, Micah from Coaster Frenzy, don't, please don't not, like, start a riot towards me. I have Alvin Geist at number two. I know my guy, I know you think it's the best ride at Busch Gardens, Williamsburg. And I do respect that. But I mean, this coaster, like I still like absolutely love Alvin Geist. This coaster is awesome. And it's definitely like much better than people are saying it is. I know Taylor thinks it's super rough, but honestly, I disagree. Sure, there might be some shaking that occurs, but honestly, like it's not the most noticeable shakiness on the roller coaster. Like, honestly, and Taylor, like, he thinks that Cobra Roll is just trash. Honestly, I think it's the best part of the ride. I think that Cobra Roll is very whippy, snappy. If you see my POV on Alpen Geist, you, you, can, you know what I'm talking about. I'm just like, oh my gosh, doing that Cobra Roll. Like, it's an incredible moment. I definitely think there is one part of the ride that I don't like, which is the transition to the mid-course. That, that's just, there's just so much head making during that part. But then I also like how it uses the train to its advantage. It is the world's tallest being an inverted roller coaster, so I really like that. And I do like the ending where you kind of like 
flying through that snow. I really like the theming on the coaster too. And yeah, I, I do think Alvin Geist is a very enjoyable roller coaster. It's one of my personal favorite BM roller coasters. And now, with that, without further ado, let's go into the number one spot, which if you haven't guessed already, it's Apollo's Chariot, the park's BM hyper roller coaster. Logan from Coaster Kids, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I think this is not the worst BM hyper out there. I think this coaster just genuinely surprised me when I wrote it again. I definitely like how like it uses a train to its advantage, like majority of the roller coasters at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. But what I love about Paul's Chariot is that the airtime I feel like is was much stronger than I was expecting. Like I think it's because I wrote Intimidator first. Like I wrote, let's see, I wrote two BM hypers, not not other than Mako. Yeah. Or yeah, I wrote Intimidator, but I, was, I, I kept getting stable on Intimidator, but I, I mean, honestly, that's a whole other thing. But with Apollo's Chariot, I definitely felt like in the back row, the airtime was really strong. It almost got to the level of Mako airtime, or Goliath, like uh, in that in that kind of way. And then the air, and also really like how, um, again, it uses the transit advantage, and I really love the first drop on this coaster. Let me tell you, this first drop is one of my personal favorites on a roller coaster. I like how... You exit the left tail, you go through a little pre-drop, and then you just drop into the subterranean area. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And then afterwards, you like you just go through a bunch of more of airtime hills, and you're also kind of next to a lake, which I think is really cool. And honestly, like this coaster, it's just flat out awesome. I was wondering if I was going to be disappointed by it since I have a different perspective roller coasters than I did in 2016, but still, I thought Apollo's Chariot was the best roller coaster in the park. And I do love how they did repaint some of the coaster. And it honestly looks really beautiful. So I can't complain much. And I know, I remember riding in 2016. I remember ha it having a rattle in 2016. But riding it this time, I didn't feel much of a rattle. Like, I don't know. Like, I felt like a polished shirt was riding better in 2019 than it was in 2016. So that is going to do it for this countdown. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more videos in the future. Also, comment down below if you've been to this park, and if you have, which ones are your favorite? Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and also don't forget to check out Theme Park Guy Productions on Instagram for more updates and content. I'll see you guys next time, and have a theme day.